In our next panel, C40 mayors will discuss how they are tackling the dual crisis of inequality and climate breakdown with the aim of creating a society that benefits uh, all citizens. And I think that everyone who has got anything to do with politics or who carry re political responsibility knows that this is exactly where the difficult balance lie. How exactly to balance this and how to balance between the short term here and now demands and the longer term, that is what comes more and more center stage in the years to come when we are going to deliver on all these things. And to help us sort of uh, shed some light on, on that problem, we have an excellent uh, panel. I would first like to welcome up here on stage our panel moderator, Mike Michael Jalner, international editor at Politiken, and panelist Ada Colau, mayor of Barcelona. And then uh, we have uh, our mayor of uh, Istanbul, Ekrem Imamoglu. And there you will need to wear your headsets to just get it ready, unless you are uh, Turkish speaking. And we also have the mayor of uh, New Orleans, Latoya Cantrell. Welcome to all of you and have a good panel. Yes, thank you for welcoming us and thank you for you coming here. Uh, well, you have already been presented a bit, but I'll present you a bit more. Um, Ada Colau, mm -hmm. you are the mayor of, of uh, Barcelona. Yes. Uh, you, ten years ago, you, you founded the platform People Affected by Mortgages. Yes. Uh, you became a mayor back in 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, and we just discussed before we came here if if you are presenting a platform or a party. It's called Barcelona and Como. Yes. I hope I pronounced it correctly. <laughs> um, welcome to you. Thank you. And then uh, Mr. Ekrem Imamolo, the mayor of uh, Istanbul, since March in 2019, already well known, but you were elected in March. Uh, since March, then yeah. since uh, June. That's twice in a year. You were. <laughs> Two elections. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then uh, Latoya Cantrell, Mayor of uh, New Orleans, welcome to, to you too. Thank you. We have, have, uh, we have called this uh, se session Bold Actions for an Inclusive Future, and we focus on inclusive future. And that is of course, bec uh, of course because uh, climate change is unfair. It uh, was a few developed countries, first of all, who polluted. Impacts are borne by the many. Some are more vulnerable to climate changes than others. We all know that 42 million people are, is controlling almost half of, of uh, the wealth on Earth, whereas it's one billion people who, who lives in, in uh, informal settlements. And in New Orleans, we knew that Katrina was not hitting everyone Equally, uh, two-thirds of uh, lost jobs were actually uh, lost by women, just to take one example. So, let's try, I would like to start with you. Can you tell us what actions New Orleans is actually taking to be a climate-resilient city for all citizens? Well, thank you uh, for, for that, and it's always great to be here. Um, as it relates to the city of New Orleans, we just uh, updated and released our climate plan uh, September of 30, uh, so short while ago in terms of updating. Uh, at the heart of it has been community engagement, um, making sure that you, know, you include, of course, the 80% of the city actually uh, that was underwater uh, post-Katrina. Uh, and you talked about even those disparities that, that exist there. But in terms of understanding that our people are still recovering uh, from Katrina and still in the midst of rebuilding, uh, and that I still, under my watch, have about $2.4 billion uh, that I need to get on the ground as it relates to infrastructure. So it's looking at those dollars and how are we reinvesting in communities and in people in a way that we were not before. 
So a part of that is ensuring that housing, for example, retrofitting, uh, first-time home ownership programs, uh, connecting our people even to jobs in the market of green infrastructure, um, making sure that that is at the heart of it as it relates to even streets and roads and you know our community that we live in that again uh, that the green infrastructure is there that we're utilizing the dollars to create bike lanes that we're holding millions of dollars uh, millions of gallons of water uh, we're looking at flood mitigation as well um, it is really across across the board in terms of how we're looking at or through that equity uh, lens uh, meeting people where where they are uh, just being very intentional about that, but through the equity lens and making sure that everyone's a part of it, you know, and listening to the people. The first thing that I had to do as mayor uh, is file a lawsuit against oil and gas. And, um, and I did that, I did that. Um, and, and listening to, uh, to people and I brought oil and gas, the whole industry, you know, in my, in my office around the table and they told me how they uh, supported Jazz Fest and oh, the French Quarter Festival, and how I needed to make sure that they didn't leave the city of New Orleans. And I said, great, festivals are great, but you know what, our people are much greater. And so that has been the center of how we look through the lens of equity, but making sure that those dollars really do uh, hit the ground where people live, and they feel connected to the improvements that um, we're seeing develop. And, and, and why have you faced the biggest uh, challenges? I mean, this is a major task you're describing here. Sure. Well, you say the biggest challenges. One is bringing your people along as you engage them, letting them know that, that, that climate change, it, it, it is real. You know, we're now seeing, let me tell you, this summer, uh, we had two 100-year storms uh, when we would collect like 0.3 uh, inches of rain in 37 days. Uh, we got well over eight in 90 minutes. So it is a reality that's happening on the ground to where people call me and say, well, are the pumps working? Well, yeah, they're working, but there's no way that we can uh, drain a city when you're getting the rainfalls that we're seeing. So a part of it is one, yes, you have the action plan. Yes, you're focusing on implementing the plan, but you also have to educate and bring people along. And that's why uh, making sure that these dollars hit the street, that people are a part of the investments that they not only can see, but that they can touch and they can feel. Um, and that, that really helps. It helps because you have to do both and you have to find balance in everything that you do. Ada, you'll be replying now. I just warn you, if you do not speak Spanish, Ada will be, be, be replying in Spanish. So put on your headphones if you don't master that language. Um, last year, uh, Barcelona was actually uh, adopting a new climate plan. Yeah. And, and you were focusing on, on environmental justice and citizen cooperation. I mean, yes. putting, in other words, uh, putting people first. Why is it so important to, to, to you in your quest to become a, a net zero emission city that you have this pe putting people first? Thank you. Um, what we want to say when we say people first, people in the center of everything, is that we want to change the model of cities. We have to change the model of the city. Cities that were designed in a patriarchal world um, were in the center. We had um, the man between 30 and 35 years, a very productive uh, era. We had neoliberalism where we uh, started to have a lot of cars. And it was for men between 30 and uh, 50 years where the man had a car to go to work. And this has changed. Uh, now we have to design uh, cities for men, for women, for the children, for the old people. Uh, it should be a city for life, and it should be a feminist city where life is in the center of town, where life is the center of all priorities. And this happens with the contamination, with pollution, and luckily, 
the conscience of people has changed in last times. It would be a paradox that in these kind of cities, you open the tap and you get black water. Same thing is what is happening with air. We are breathing black air, and we have a lot of pulmonary diseases in Barcelona. Uh, we have got asthma. We've got uh, cancer because of that. We have an urgency. We have an urgency here, and we need people. We need our people to be uh, included in our actions. Uh, so we do it with the population. And with the population, we have uh, a climatic emergency plan um, as of January. And we uh, are will have all the cars gone, all the pollution gone within the city. And another thing changing the model of cities, uh, think about uh, our children, the little boys, the little girls. Uh, and so we are very much collaborating with our schools uh, where people are being educated, especially in the public uh, and in the private schools uh, in the center of Barcelona. These kids are uh, breathing black air, and of course they are affected. So we have to do all of this uh, for the little ones because uh, they are our allies, the most important allies. Uh, uh, they have no pressures, no economic pressures, and they help us. They help us uh, leading uh, this uh, change of cities. So we work a lot with schools, uh, um, with ch the children to change the model of cities. The city should be for life uh, and uh, not for death. Of the very often, if you give people something greener, you take away from other people, people who would like to, to go into the city. Um, how, have, how have you handled that resistance, which will always come? Yes, there is always a resistance, of course, because uh, if uh, you have an unjust ecological system, an unjust social system, is because there are some people that are privileged and they want to keep those privileges. You have to take them away. It is absolutely impossible uh, not to take away privileges if you want to do something um, ecological. So Barcelona is, uh, uh, wants to do something for the people public transport, uh, we have more um, space for bicycles, uh, but uh, we also need a, uh, we don't need cowards. We need governance, uh, global governance, also by politicians. We shouldn't be um, having um, helps for diesel, for instance, uh, and also for short uh, flights. We shouldn't have short flights. and. Uh, we should open the consciousness uh, of the people. We should explain, explain and uh, tell about uh, and see what the diagnostics are. We have to talk to the people. We have to explain and show what is possible and how things can be changed. And we have to show that the uh, privileged ones that are making money, that this is suicidal and uh, that we are losing. We are losing so much. So it, uh, try, it, 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 it means to uh, try to save the city, to make it more greener, uh, to make it more safe, where our children, where our aged people can be on the streets, can play on the streets, can be happy. And that means a win-win for everyone. So, so just to, to round this up, if you should give one practical advice to, to other mayors in, in this uh, room uh, or other mayors who are in the beginning phases of integrating equity into uh, climate action planning, what, what would the most important advice be from you to, to them? Well, the main advice that we could give of course, we don't have one recipe for everyone. Uh, there are different models. Uh, we have our model. 
So it's important to find your own model. And we have a lot of declaration, Paris four years ago, a lot of meetings, a lot of declarations, but we need action. This has been said before. And it's also uh, important to speak about the new Green Deal. Uh, it, it, people live in the city. That's where life is. Uh, and it has to be productive. Also, the change is productive. And uh, you, can, you have to say this very clear. You can say, well, I want a real new Green Deal. This is not rhetoric. This should be real. And it means that we have to pay for it. We have to do some efforts. Uh, it means also that if you um, put fire to the Amazon forest, uh, you have uh, you need measures, and the responsible persons, they have to be indicted. You cannot let them go. This is a criminal action. And we have uh, to speak about a real new Green Deal. We, can, we have to see what is happening um, around the world. Uh, we have to uh, finish with diesel at short notice. We have to uh, stop with plastic once and for all. We have to eliminate plastic in our food. They should. We, uh, these globally really will impact uh, the whole production chain. And of course, uh, you need uh, your local measures and the global measures. And the city should be uh, a help for the governments. And I think we can change these paradigmas. <clears throat> Mr. Imamolo, uh, you just signed up your city to the 2020 deadline. Uh, pledge, which is like CO2 emissions should peak at 2020. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a bit more for your reasons behind that. Uh, I'm very happy to be here, first of all. Um, yesterday we signed uh, the agreement with C40. Sorry to be late. But, uh, of course, we have some actions in our city. Uh, but uh, now, as soon as possible, we, we check the uh, position of Istanbul and we take a photo of, uh, photograph of the Istanbul, where we are. And uh, we, we make sure that how we begin for climate um, action uh, and what is the... Uh, uh, climate list uh, of uh, Istanbul as soon as possible. So uh, yesterday I saw that we have to sign it and we have to be part of this organization. And uh, very powerful part of uh, this organization because uh, I'm on the behalf of, uh, I'm the mayor on the behalf of 16 million people. So. Uh, this uh, city needs this kind of politics and uh, we share all experiences uh, wherever you, uh, you are in, 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 in the part of Istanbul, uh, in USA or in Spain or in other countries and other cities because the world is only one. We, we have many cities but the world is only one. So this is, uh, the, the, you know, the new generations of Istanbul, millions and millions of people ready for this, ready for this. And uh, uh, in, in our campaign also, we talk about climate. We talk about uh, the, the problems of the city. And uh, we, we came all together face to face, all problems. In the first 10 problems, maybe seven or eight problems are uh, uh, climate uh, problems. So uh, this is our uh, first uh, step uh, to, be, uh, to be success uh, in, in our city. So we work on it together uh, with C40 or and other organizations all over the world. When we are talking about inclusiveness, I mean, you as a newly elected mayor in a city uh, 
which has received large amounts of, of refugees and is still receiving uh, large amounts of, of refugees. What, what have your approach been to, to shaping climate action to include them? Uh, in, if you are mayor, as, as, as my friends uh, you know, if you are mayor, uh, uh, you are the mayor of everybody who lives in your city. It uh, doesn't matter uh, uh, he or she is a refugee or uh, citizen, it doesn't matter. Uh, we think that uh, uh, human, and, and we, to we talk with them uh, this, this, in, in this uh, psychology. And uh, my short answer to your question is uh, really uh, courage. Uh, and we, we, have, we want to start with these feelings. Uh, I, I want to uh, uh, share with you a quote from uh, Ismet Inönü, who is the second president of Turkey. Uh, honorable people should be as brave as these honorable people. So, uh, uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Now each and every human uh, has the courage for an inclusive future where then can share a just uh, of life. Uh, and the most important and vital courage uh, is the time, is the courage to see, accept and express the truth. Uh, and uh, one, one, uh, one point that uh, uh, we, we need uh, the courage of Spartacus uh, against slavery and Mandela against apartheid. Uh, th this feeling is very important, uh, but uh, now we, we uh, know that w there is very good examples in the world, as a Greta Thunberg. Uh, young people like uh, her are an example of such a courage. You know, there is many Gretas in Istanbul. Really, I see them uh, in the streets. Uh, and uh, just two weeks ago, Atlas Sarafoğlu, uh, uh, she, she is an uh, 11 year old a girl, and I have 15 activist children of similar age visited me and many other, uh, uh, and many other politicians like me. And uh, these courageous children wanted us to develop new and effective policies policies related to the environment, especially climate uh, change. They are right, because some facts are obvious. Scientists don't have, uh, even uh, have to warn you of these facts. Uh, uh, I remember when I was in university, it was uh, snowed uh, many times, it snowed many times in winter, and snow would remain uh, four days, five days in Istanbul. But now, uh, in Istanbul, there is no snow, uh, and climate is changing. And uh, as uh, as my friend uh, told, these uh, there are many floods uh, uh, in Istanbul, especially uh, the previous uh, years. These floods mostly affect the older neighbors of the city and with the poor uh, neighbors. Uh, so. Uh, Unexpected rains cause serious damage and on ag agricultural areas in Istanbul and uh, around of Istanbul. Uh, as a politician uh, who won the two elections uh, in, a, in a year, uh, I can say that st <laughs> citizen of Istanbul uh, supported me uh, really in hopes of better quality of life, the first thing, uh, and not uh, for mega engineering project. Forget that projects. But that Just feel the nature. And, and I, I came in refugees. Uh, very few cities uh, in the world uh, have a, as big uh, or immigrant population uh, than my city, very few cities in the world, because one million only Syrian people uh, live in Istanbul now. Uh, and uh, the others, with the others, uh, refugees, 1.2 million. We have the big responsibility to create better uh, quality of life for these immigrants. Uh, for this goal, we started to work with them 
as well in every issue, including climate change issue, what they need and what they want. And uh, as a, as a w you have a question? Just yes, a minute. Okay. Have, because time is running, so we're okay. Have <laughs> okay, okay, we, we, we are also need a cooperation, cooperation. Uh, I want to say something, last thing, last thing. Uh, now, in the world, refugee problem is not the problem of that city or that country. Refugee problem is the problem of whole the world. Uh, uh, four million people in Turkey and 1.2 million people in Istanbul uh, and it started five years ago. In five years, it's, it's a crazy. So we have to work on it. We need your co cooperation, international co cooperation, and uh, help on this big issue very soon uh, to be together uh, for this problem. Yes. Being a moderator is rather stressful to see a watch counting down second, <laughs> second by second now. Okay. I have one hot burning question and it's going to be the last one and you will have three seconds to answer it, all of you. <laughs> okay. What do you say to people who don't see climate change as a priority in your city? Latoya. Well, this is actually what I was trying to allude to on the front end. As we're seeing again these rainfalls coming faster and harder and when you say, hey, climate is changing, you have folks in your community say, oh, I don't want to hear about the climate change. Well, we need to continue to have this level of support, C40, and really mayors around the world to we, where we have one another's back and getting outside of our bubble because our people feel like they're the only ones that are, you know, are, are flooding or at the highest levels. They don't seem to see outside of themselves, although a couple of weeks ago, Houston had 42 inches of rain in 24 hours. It's like, come on. So it, it means being able to uh, use our resources wisely on the ground, doing the work, helping them retrofit their homes, hazard mitigation programs, even elevation, holding water, showing them that we, they are a part of the change you know, that has to be made in order to sustain ourselves. And that gives you the platform and the foundation you need to also continue to do the work. So it's the balance that we have to strike. Ada, you have 10 seconds. What do you say? Um, a la ciudadanía que se resiste a la idea. Well, those citizens that oppose the idea of climate change, I would say to them, think about your children. Your children have the right to live. They have the right to be happy. Our generation is going against the rights of children that are yet to be born, and they have the right to live. They have the right to live a better life than us. So I should tell them to uh, allow everybody to live their lives, to allow the planet to regenerate itself, and to allow us to have a better world uh, to uh, look forward to. Panel. Now it's blinking red up here, zero, zero, zero. I thank you very much for your, for your, for your words and thank you for coming. Thank you very much. <laughs> I was lucky between two.